G'day, this video is about carbonation caps um, and especially a new sort that's out. Most people are familiar with the old style carbonation caps, sometimes they're plastic. Uh, you can fill your bottle up with beer from your tap, or however you do it. Screw that on and uh, fill up the rest with gas so your beer doesn't go flat. Or you can put water in there, hook up your gas line cold water, shake it up and you'll have soda water. Uh, it's just a simple fits your beer, your gas connect line, sorry, and uh, just simply puts gas into things. Now the new sort has this little tail on it. That tail comes in very handy. Uh, means you can do several other things with it. Um, you can use it as a, like a counter pressure bottle filler, which is what I'm going to show you today. And uh, what else, what, uh, the other thing they've done is they've machined the quick disconnect post to accept gas and beer lines without a problem. And that's really handy too, when I, you'll see what I mean in a minute. The other thing you need is a quick jumper lead, just a, some beer tube, beer line, and a couple of beer quick disconnects. Normally I'd use these bottles, Cooper's bottles, or a few other companies have them. And they're sort of specially made for beer, you know, they're brown and you get them with your beer kits. But today I'm just going to use a plain old uh, PET bottle so you can see what's happening. And sometimes when you go to parties, you fill up a two litre or a couple of two litres and uh, you don't have to carry so many bottles. Also, you're not carrying glass into parties, they're very handy. The other thing you'll need is another small piece of beer line just to go into your bottle from the cap. And you want it to go right down to the bottom, just like that. And just usual, you can use a hair dryer or just stick it in some uh, freshly boiled water. Just about three quarters of an inch. And push it on to the barb. Get it over the edge and once you've got it on, just be careful you don't kink it. You're actually better off not going too hot leaving it in the hot water too long because it can get too soft and you'll kink the hose. I don't know if you can see that. Ugh, like I just about did then. No, that's okay. There you go. And just check the size of the bottle. This one's a bit long, I'm just going to trim it. A bit long. Trim the, oh, trim the end off. So there we go. It's down right to the bottom of the bottom. I've cut it on an angle just so it doesn't bottom out. Might should do the trick. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is sanitise it, especially if you're going to keep it for any length of time. If you're just going to take it to a party and drink it in an hour, you probably don't have to worry as long as everything is clean. So I'll just put the lid onto the bottle. And I've got my trusty beer line cleaner. I've hooked up the lead I made to the beer line cleaner. You can see how I made that beer line cleaner in my other videos. Oh, you can see the pressure as soon as I hook it up is starting to push till it equalizes the star sand through the beer line and into the bottom of the bottle. Not sure if you can see all that, but it's coming just from my beer line cleaner straight into the bottle through the line I'm going to use. Now you don't need one of these pressure things to do this, but it just helped me today. It sanitizes everything in one go that I'm going to use. And for this demonstration, that's sanitized enough. I know the lines, the beer line's sanitized, the cap's sanitized where the beer's going to touch, and the bottle's sanitized. So now I'll just tip that out and we'll get ready to fill it. I'm just going to pour a beer to show you the beer I'm using is actually carved and I'm not pulling your leg. And I actually turned up the carbonation last night to about um, well, 16 or 17 psi it was, more than I usually have it. I don't usually like really carbonated beers, but I just wanted to make sure this works with highly carbonated beers. Get that out of the way. I always put my hand in the way when I'm pouring them. But that beer is definitely carbonated that I'm using. It always looks black on there, but it's not. Oh, it's a nice drop too. 
So what we've got now is a sanitised bottle and carbonation cap, sanitised uh, beer jumper lead, which I've emptied out just by depressing in the little uh, buttons in there and drained out the excess of the star sand. First thing to do is grab your gas line, make sure your lid's on, hook your gas up. Now you'll feel, or you should feel if it's working, bottle's hard from being full of gas. Now there's still a lot of oxygen in there and you don't want it especially if you're storing your bottle for a long time so you want to purge the oxygen out with the carbon dioxide and the way you simply do that is just by loosening the lid off a bit. Unscrew it a little bit. You hear that gas coming through? You don't need much. That should be plenty. That bottle should be just about purge of oxygen now. Do it for as long as you like, whatever makes you feel comfortable, but you shouldn't need too much. So yeah, unhook the gas, make sure the lid's nice and tight. That's still under pressure and tight with CO2. Put the CO2 back up to your keg. Next thing you want to do is unhook your beer line and hook up the little beer jumper lead you made. One to the keg and one to your bottle. Now you might see beers going in here straight away just from the pressure equalising out. It's slowly going in there but that'll stop and you can notice how much there is little head there's hardly any head there at all. Well, might be a little bit of foam from the star sand that was in the bottle. Now the next thing to do is the same again, just loosen that lid off just a touch. Watch what you're doing because you don't want to go too fast. And then as you loosen it off you'll notice that that beer will start going into the bottle. There we go. Just got to be careful. You, you want to keep the bottle hard when you're doing it. You don't want oxygen going in there. A bit fast. Back it off a bit. Take your time. Oh, a bit fast again. It's a little bit fiddly, but once you get the hang, have it. Hang of it. Probably went a bit fast, the tiny little bit ahead. Slow down. Do the lid up. Take your beer line off. There you go, you've got a bottle, a beer with <laughs> relatively no head for what I did just then. If you had it taken your time a little bit more, you would have even got I would have even got any less head. But there you go. Now that might be a little bit shaken up if you went to pour it straight away. But if you go and stick it in the fridge for half an hour or so, you could uh, take this lid off and replace it with a normal PT lid, uh, PET lid quickly. Got one here somewhere. One of those. And you'll be right to take that to a party. Or you can just leave that cap on. The other thing you could do is you, if you had any of the normal style, is replace it with this and pump a little bit more gas into it. But there you go. Anybody that knows that's tried to fill up one of these from a keg, um, you can get a lot of head and a lot of disturbance and turbulence and it's not that easy. But there you go. That's under pressure, that bottle. The bottle's nice and hard and it's full of beer. That should, by rights, keep its pressure. There shouldn't be any pressure getting out of that. Now I'm going to whack this in the fridge for half an hour before I open it and replace the lid. It's not entirely, I might even try it now. We'll try it now. Just hope this doesn't go everywhere. It could. Take that off. Oh, you can see how little the beer's shaken up. Otherwise that would have foamed everywhere. And uh, put the lid on. Now you've lost a little bit of pressure, of course. If I had a left the carbonation cap on, you wouldn't have lost any. 
Now that'll be fine in the fridge. I'm gonna put this away in the fridge today and pull it out and drink it on my cast tomorrow night and see just how good it is. But I can't see there being any problems. It's fully carbonated already before it went in. Um, it didn't get stirred up and turbulent to lose its carbonation. And um, there was carbon dioxide in the bottle, so there should be hardly any oxygen at all in there. Well, I see this could be good for competitions or for just emptying your keg. If you've only got a bit left, but you need to fill it up with the next beer. That worked brilliantly. I'm surprised how well that worked. And it's a lot cheaper than uh, other guns, beer guns and that. Even to make the other beer guns uh, will cost you more than 20 bucks for one of those things. And they'll probably get cheaper as they get older. That worked well, I'm really pleased with that. Whack it in the fridge. So anyway, that worked really well. I'm very surprised how well it worked actually. I haven't used it before. Um, that's probably why I was going up, that, that, that. <laughs> um, and I was a bit of a stab in the dark because I haven't used it before. But that worked really well. And from the results I got in that bottle then, uh, I can't see there being any problem. The bottle's pressurized. Um, as I said before, what the beer wasn't stirred up. Um, it should be fully carbonated. And by rights, that should last a while in the bottle. Um, I've never done it before, but if you've purged out that oxygen, that should last for a long time. You want to look after it, probably keep it in the fridge as much as you can. All I've got to do now is rinse these out. I'll use my handy beer line washer again and uh, rinse these out before they dry and get gunky. You can get them from uh, Keg King or some other places on eBay I've noticed. Keg King were the first, I think they had it. They've got a video which is probably a bit more detailed than mine. But I wanted to try, you know, you never trust when you get things from shops. And it works perfectly for them in the shop and when you get them home, you never know how they're going to work. So I'm really, really chuffed with that. That'll be good for parties and stuff. I, the old toys, I used to just turn the PSI down and get it from the tap. Um, but even then some days, <laughs> You'd end up with half foam, then tip the foam out or drink it or wait for it to go down and refill the rest of the bottle. I've used all sorts of contraptions out of the taps that go to the bottle, but nothing's worked quite as easy and as well as that did. Um, so there you go. Anyway, cheers. Got any questions, just ask. At this very moment, Salad Willis is down for a few days. We're working on it. But there'll be a big competition soon. Uh, probably the next video. Um, for if you want to win a t-shirt, uh, stabby holder, bottle opener, all that sort of thing. Anyway, cheers. And I just want to mention uh, this SJ Poor 2014 challenge. If there's any people locally in Victoria or Australia um, that want to join up, please sign up. Um, and get in there early so we can gauge the numbers. I'm going to go in it this year. Um, but we just need the numbers, we need to know. Alright, cheers.